said. No. I'm sorry, I'm being advised that what you're saying is vexatious, and I'd ask, I'd like to ask you to leave the building, please. History, is that your problem? It's in the history books. Whether or not we believe or we understand what they are saying, I think that actually we should allow that gentleman to finish his time. Thank you. Is that that contribution was vexatious, scurrilous, improper, and objectionable? I mean, who, who was it who felt that they could just assume an authority that they simply haven't got? I, I think I, it was the panic over what was being said. So in this video, we're going to do a deep dive on what Gordon said and whether it was really vexatious and scurrilous with Lance and Brian from The Peacekeepers. Now, they are both very knowledgeable on the English Constitution and they spend more time reading legislation than is probably healthy. Welcome. And before we get going with what was quite an extraordinary meeting at Colchester Council, could you just briefly introduce what peacekeepers are and what you do? Lance, go on. I've got a tea say, <laughs> Lance. So, oh, oh, right, oh, oh, right. Okay, so I'm going to do. I'll, I'll, I'll do most of the talking tonight, which is not <laughs> ever unusual. Um, so, peacekeepers are basically an evidence-based constitutional law group. I, I guess is probably one summation of them. Um, I think, in fairness, it's probably reasonable to say that what we've done or where they've come from, it's been an organic process that they've developed to this date. Um, looking at really understanding that, that things are wrong and then trying to understand how we've got here uh, and how things are actually meant to function. Um, that, in a nutshell, I think is probably it, Brian. I think, is that fair? Uh, just just to add, um, it's trying to introduce, uh, reintroduce the, the rule of law uh, because it's severely lacking. So what did you guys make of the council's reaction to what Gordon said? Uh, I mean, in fairness, what probably makes sense is to very quickly uh, look at what it was that Gordon said and, and, and the accuracy of what he was saying is probably relevant. This council is not a council. In fact, that is deception. If I'm not mistaken, under the statutes of fraud, that's actually a criminal event. You're a corporation. You're a registered corporation just like UK government, just like Parliament. They have no authority over the public. They're the same as Tesco, the same as McDonald's. So when this body asks people to pay council tax, they have zero authority whatsoever. Yet they harass people, demand that money, and that money goes to where? A central fund, the consolidated fund. That money after it's gone into the consolidated fund does what? It buys weapons. It genocide and so he, he opened out basically introducing the uh, fact that the uh, councils are corporations um, now that's true but it, it's how they're, they're, it's they're, they're corporated that they're a corporation but they're not for profit that's yeah. the confusion out there yeah so, well that's yeah. clear by looking at their accounts <laughs> definitely not for profit <laughs> Yeah, um, and and the way they act, it's ever going to get worse. So uh, all we need to do is uh, understand where that came from. So if you go to legislation.gov.uk, the 1972 Local Government Act, uh, and uh, Section 2, the Constitution of Principal Councils of England, subsection 3, each council mentioned in one or two shall be a body corporate. There you go. By the name, the county council or the district council, as the case may be. So it's a legislative aspect that he was referencing, and he was perfectly right to in in his uh, in what he said. So we haven't got a problem with fact here. Um, what we've got seemingly is is a problem with what he was saying in the minds of the uh, in the minds of I'll say the deputy mayor, but in fairness, that that wouldn't be particularly fair because we believe that she was having someone talking in her ear um advising her and i would say that that person need we need to understand who that person is and what authority they were acting under however yes, it would have been the chief monitoring officer andrew weavers yeah who has no mandate whatsoever no. uh, to... can i just add to that because i don't think it's been spoken about yet i meant to ask rachel gordon thought it was the guy to her left so on the right of her as we were looking at it which isn't andrew it's the other guy oh so uh... I, I thought because he's put in a complaint he's put in uh he's got a crime number um mm -hmm. against the deputy mayor and against not andrew weaver's the other one well the so... other one was tim young who was the uh, mayor the year before 
I just need to clarify because Gordon's put in the complaint about the other two and not Andrew Weavers. So okay. we need to just right. oh, yes. make sure we know who was whispering in the ear. We well, don't... one of the councillors said to me that she would have taken that under advisement from the monitoring officer. Right. And she did refer to it at some point. Um, and and in fairness, in fairness, it's a question that must be answered by the council. Yes. Yeah. Was was the deputy mayor acting uh, under under her own steam? Or was she? Or was, was somebody whispering in her in her ear? And who is that? And 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 uh, and on what basis that they were they were doing what they were doing? We, let's let's roll forward to to um, uh, what he's what he said next, because what he said next is 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 quite relevant. Um, because what he said was, in so much as they're a body corporate corporation, however they decide to to uh, legally manifest themselves, and frankly, we don't care. It's it's just you know it's just how they are determined, determined to organise themselves. Um, but what he said was that basically they're no different from Tesco's or whatever. And and in that respect, he's he's absolutely correct again because it's just another it's a corporate. So what? Um, they're no no different in that respect. So that was not technically incorrect in any way. But then he said something that was quite important. Um, uh, he said that they have no authority over over the public, and I think that is what started to to raise the hackles of of, of our local of or, you know self self professed authorities. Um, and indeed, he was correct again in that respect. They have absolutely no authority over us individually whatsoever, and for that, to, in order to understand what authority they what they what they are and what they can do you go to the localism act um I, here i have it already baked um and the localism act 2011 if you go to its opening number one uh local authorities general power of competence a local authority has the power to do anything that individuals generally may do so they can do whatever they want in the same way that i can do whatever i want what I can't do is, and, and and as he said on the night, I can't I can't um, demand money out of people, and I think that was particularly what um, probably raised who, whoever's hackles, and that's true. I can't I can't demand money. Remember, council tax. He specifically mentioned council tax. Council tax is a demand for money. Uh, there's a lot of confusion out there, which is propagated by councils they call it a bill it's not a bill um there's no contract it can't be a bill so legislatively what is it it's a demand for money it's demand notice um so a local authority doesn't actually have the power to do that because uh here's the localism act and it says they have the power to do anything that an individual may do can i demand money no neither can they it's as simple as that uh he also sort of said with menaces and that's true because what they do is they deliver a demand notice for your deal. And if you don't pay them, um, then they'll come after you. And they have wrongly, um, they, they have a, a, a court system that, that isn't operating correctly at the current time. But that's something we're going to fix. That's going that's all in process of being uh, sorted out, much to the annoyance of, uh, of the councils and I'm sure government. Uh, so to quickly butt in, uh, for any councillors who may be watching this video, we are not against contribution and council tax. We are against the way it is done. What we would like to see in place is a system where we agree to what the money is going to be spent on. So we work out what the essential and necessary services are and how much we're all going to contribute rather than the way it's currently done. So a meeting of the mind and a contractual agreement that we pay you rather than the mafia-esque set up we have at the moment. And that would give the taxpaying public a lot more control over how our money is spent. So far, everything he said to that point, technically correct. OK, so we're just adding this quick little segment because we ran into one of the councillors last night at the town hall and he mentioned that Gordon's comment of genocide shouldn't have been said and that's perhaps what caused all of the upset. So we're going to quickly address that now, or rather Lance's. Uh, yeah, OK, uh, to be fair, let's let's take it back and let's do the pre-runner as to what Gordon said. So was he'd made, he'd made a claim that council tax was... Um, was linked to what's called the consolidated fund, um, and that's something that I've pointed out already. Is that's a claim that actually we can't evidence. 
So there's no evidence that as yet, I know people are looking to establish linkage, but there is no, there's nothing that we can really rely on to say uh, absolutely that that link exists. And then consequently, he then went on to claim um, that via that mechanism, they can't evidence um, that consequently our counterattack is going to genocide. Um, now, what he's doing there, and again, um, I personally don't see any of this to be malicious or, or whatever it, whatever else it is that the council now are, are claiming to be able to use to shut people down. I don't believe that's malicious. I think it's slightly misguided at, at best. Um, one, because he's using one claim to support another. Now, we all we do know that business roads, and this is evidence, business roads go towards the consolidated fund. Um, and I think it's any grown up in the room would admit that the British government, via its many sources of funding, does, by way of what they contribute to, contribute to genocide. Now, there's a great misunderstanding out there as to what genocide is. In many people's minds, it's an enormous thing, uh, you know, and obviously the Holocaust is, you know, whatever you may think of that is held up to be the thing that gave rise to genocide. Now, genocide is actually much smaller than that. Um, it's basically, I mean, you can look up the word. It, so genocide is the international destruction of a people in whole or in part, and that's important. Um, and it's defined by the Genocide Convention of the UN uh, as any of the five acts committed with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, ethical, racial or re religious group. The five acts are killing members of the group, causing them serious bodily or mental harm, imposing living conditions intended to destroy the group, preventing births and forcibly transferring children out of the group. It's not the wholesale destruction of entire societies. It's It's much more nuanced than that. So when you actually understand what genocide means, i.e. its accepted international definition, does the, the simple question is, does the British government contribute to genocide? Simple answer to that, absolutely yes. So what I would question is of, of council, and, and Rachel, you made a, a good point before we came on, is that many councils up and down the country through their through their um through their uh, retirement funds will be investing in arms dealers will be investing in all sorts of things that we probably shouldn't be investing in um so for any council to claim that they individually are not contributing towards genocide is probably a bit of a reach given that we can at least claim with some degree of surety that their business rate collection goes to central government and central government certainly participate in regimes which are causing genocide as it is correctly understood the only problem that you might have with with what Gordon said is he made a link between council tax. We can't evidence that link. Um, but if the councils wish to defend their ability to shut people down on the basis of them expressing an opinion, mm, no. Well, yes, Sorry, I mean, that's... that was the opportunity for them to educate and say, no, that's not how it works. But they missed that opportunity and just wanted to eject him. So that is well, our it... objection, the way it was done, and them it... thinking that that was OK. It's we, we have to respect people's opinions. Yes. And his opinion, though I believe the initial claim um, with respect to council tax and the consolidated fund was a bit iffy, um, that the British government... Uh, and 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 the councils, by virtue of the business rates link, contribute to genocide. It's completely undeniable. Um, you can point to a million and one regimes uh, which the government have funded in some respect or other. Um, there are the obvious candidates out there, you know, choose them. Um, um, but to deny that simple, brutal truth is just to simply turn your face to the wind because you don't like it. Um, and so, again... Uh, let's let's have freedom of speech. Let's have freedom of expression. Let's correct people where they're wrong. Yes. Let's not shut them up because Absolutely. we're going to shut people up. Uh, shutting people up is denying sunlight. It's denying the sanity of truth. Uh, the, the, um, so let's not go that way. Let's let let everybody have their say. Let everybody express their opinions, and let's 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 correct everyone where they're wrong. Um, and and though that isn't a high bar, that's the only way to go forward. Uh, um, and I think that was the point at which 
the mayor decided to shut his microphone off uh, because he was, that was his first accusation of being vexatious. Um, vexatious means um, annoying. Okay, it right, might well, well have annoyed them, but it doesn't mean to say he was wrong or should have been shut absolutely, down. Absolutely, absolutely. And and so now, now we now we converse with one another on the basis of what annoyance. I mean, this is not really how I believe adults communicate with one another. Um, I may you may not like what it is that I'm saying, and if I'm factually incorrect, then please come and put me right. But to shut me down, I'm sorry. That's that's we're, we're moving into territories where we don't want to go. And in fairness to some of the councillors last night, they didn't want to be gone there either. And, and they made their feelings quite clear. Point of order, um, point of order. I, I believe that in a democratic society, every single resident in Colchester is allowed to have their say, whether or not we believe or we understand what they are saying. I think that actually we should allow that gentleman to finish his time. Thank you. On a, on a point on the uh, point of order that the mayor has decided upon and you shouldn't argue with is that that contribution was vexatious scurrilous improper and objectionable so you were that was read out before the meeting started and the gentleman is now being asked to leave the chamber and the mayor is asking the hall keepers to do that so thank you i think we should support the mayor all the way in her actions deputy mayor we hold up good behaviour, and there was some good behaviour in the chamber, but there was some appalling behaviour, and it's that which we need to really call out. This is red card time um, from uh, from Pat, as it were. Now, let's look at what it is that the, 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 the have your say actually is, because she opened the meeting uh, and she said, basically, there will be nothing that is scurrilous, vexatious, improper or otherwise. This was new language. Mm. This hadn't, appeared, to my mind, this had not appeared previously. I hadn't heard it in any of the meetings previously. No. Um, the the only conversations that have generally been about have been around respectful, uh, i.e., I'll respect your opinion and you respect mine, and I've got no problem with that. I think that that's a reasonable way, way to uh, way to communicate and deal with one another as adults. So. Given that that hadn't, to my mind, that was a new thing, um, I went and had a look then at the constitution for, for Colchester, and um, all it says in the initial bump is um, the citizens' rights, um, and we have uh, a right to participate in the council's have your say, question time, and contribute to investigations by the scrutiny panel. I, you know, and in fairness, I believe that that's exactly what you know you, you guys and, and we're all doing at the moment. We're certainly helping the scrutiny guys and we're trying to help the council. Whether they appreciate it or not is another matter. Um, and then, so anyway, then I dug down into the constitution itself and then article three, uh, where it's got the public and the council and you, 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 you know, you go through it. And then in the participation, it says citizens have the right to participate in the public question time, uh, which we know it's kind of set out there. And then we get here is our responsibilities. So their, their own constitution states the behaviour that's expected of us. Um, citizens must not be violent, abusive or threatening to councillors or officers and must not willfully harm things owned by the council, councillors or officers. I have yet to find any language that goes to scurrilous, vexatious, improper or otherwise. So I think we need to ask ourselves, because we need to understand the rules of the game, right? Now, I'm perfectly content with the rules of the game as evidenced by their constitution and previous meetings. Are we now in a scenario, though, given how the council behaved in the last meeting, whereby basically they just shut us down? Because why? They may not perceive the... Well, they don't like what's being said to them, whether it's right or otherwise. Now, it simply is have your say. It doesn't say, you know, subject to it being in a, in in accordance with our opinion, uh, or you're not allowed to say things we don't like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If that's how they want to play it, then at least be honest, adjust your constitution, and say, look, we've got to have your say, but we really don't want you to come here and talk about things that you want to talk about. You're only here to talk about the stuff that we want. Now, 
that's quite pertinent because the month before, at the end of the full council meeting, the mayor, as opposed to the deputy mayor, congratulated the chamber and, and the public speakers and, and welcomed the public speakers and how the chamber allows freedom of speech. Now, I don't believe that they had the authority to allow freedom of speech, but at least it was clearly stated. So I think we need to understand what is it? Do we have freedom of speech? And if not, as 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 I believe the authorities don't want us to have it particularly, um, then then what are the rules? How's it going to work going forward? Because uh, we've got we've got big problems in this country that we're trying to address, and we're trying to address in the right manner. Now, in the right manner means pointing out a great many things that people have let go to the wayside, which have allowed us to get to where we are now. Um, and so we're not going to allow the authorities to continue in the way in which they have been continuing because they are out of control. And not only are they out of control, they're wasting everyone's time as we're trying to effectively get change that works for everyone. Um, now, that's a non-political. We're an apolitical. Uh, we, we, we have an apolitical position. We're not interested in opinion. We're simply interested in the facts and the ground and how things are meant to work. And we know when we look at our constitution and how things are actually designed, that they are non-political. They they have no interest in opinion. We should simply, as we've been asking for the longest time, things are meant to be done on an evidential basis and that then everyone can look at the evidence and then proceed forward. If uh, And that that's how it's meant to work not not you know i think this or i think that it's simply well where does that belief come from how is it that you think that what has led you to that position okay you show me the evidence and then if i can't get there because your thinking is is not correct then then you don't go there it's not you know that that's how it's kind of meant to work but also then, it's their definition of what's vexatious, scurrilous, et cetera. So it's down to the individual chairing the meeting. So they've true. given themselves self censorship they've got the self censorship or censorship for us. Yeah, yeah. And who yeah. even knew they had a mute button? I've never seen that used in the yeah. entire nine months we've been looking at their meetings. No, I mean it was a it was a great meeting to elevate quite 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 how bad things are. Uh, mm. now, I mean great, because you know, you've 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 shown the general public that you do not tolerate the general public. You know, yeah. you know, to a certain degree, we will tolerate them. But then vexatious, uh, what, annoyance? I mean, seriously. I mean, what was the guy saying that was wrong? Because after you closed him down on the basis of of, uh, of his original comments, which were, which in retrospect were all perfectly reasonable and correct, he then, he then decided, well, I'm going to have to give you a quick history lesson. Well, let me move on to history then. Let's take a look a little at the history. Let's uh, start with the Magna Carta that was brought about because of dissatisfaction amongst the public. About 400 years later, we had it again, the Glorious Revolution. We moved into the Bill of Rights there. I'm sorry, I, I can't see what, what you're saying now relates to the three minutes that you have to get your point across. Oh, I mean, it's all part of the same concerns. <laughs> In the Bill of Rights, it says that uh, no fines or forfeiture can be uh, uh, burdened on, on the public. It is current legislation. It also says in there that under the supremacy clause, not to defer uh, authority to any foreign body. We've done that. If you're not, if you don't know. No. I'm sorry, I'm being advised that what you're saying is vexatious and I'd ask, I'd like to ask you to leave the building, please. History, is that your problem? It's in the history books. I mean, then she shut him down on the basis that she didn't understand what point he was trying to make. Well, we, I work in on the basis that you allow someone to speak to their point before trying to understand what point is they're trying to make without allowing them to finish having made it. I mean, call me crazy, but <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of how I see things working. And then, so he then determined to go on a on a on a brief detour into into the history books. And I think his point was really clear because right at the beginning he said that the general public have got a problem. You know, we've we've got a problem with how things are operating. And then he he, he sort of historically went, well, look, you know, 
this is nothing new. You know, he basically was saying, look, they had a problem back in the 1200s and we got the Magna Carta. You know, we had a repeat of the problem 400 years later. And, and then we went and basically, to my mind, we solved for the problem forever with the Bill of Rights and the Glorious Revolution. You know, a bloodless coup, you know. Uh, you know the the most important thing I uh, personally and and I evidently I think uh, that that's on the that's in the legislative book to this day. Um, people just don't understand it, uh, and they don't understand the consequences of it. But we're, we're, but again, education, education, education. We're gonna we, you know we're fixing that. Um, so at that point, he hadn't done anything wrong. All he simply iterated was historical fact. But as soon as he'd started to go on to things that are obviously treacherous in terms of the minds of the panel somewhere, they shut him down completely. And then they did something even more entertaining. You know, not only was he then effectively, you know, it, all he did was he went he went back and sat in the in, in what is effectively a public gallery as a member of the public. You need to leave the chair. No, I don't. Yes, it's a public gallery. No, please just if you wouldn't mind help us out. This is my public gallery, not yours. Uh, when do, do, do you mind leaving? No, I would not. I'm not Please, going to be leaving. I don't want to no, sorry, bud. I'm so I'm sorry. Staying. I'm, I'm really, sorry. I'm, no, I'm, this I'm, is I'm, public gallery. It's a public meeting. Well, OK, but I'm only doing my job. Show me where she's got authority. I, I, I don't have to show me. anything. I'm, just, I'm asking in the nicest way as I can tell you no. to respectfully leave the chamber. OK, well, in that case, I, I may have to call the police in that case. You do what you need to do. <coughs> OK, I will do so. Excuse me a second. Well, that wasn't good enough for the chair. She then adjourned the meeting and called the police. On what basis? Hmm. Where was the breach of the Where was the breach of the peace? There wasn't one. It's was complete nonsense. A waste of everyone's time. And and again, elevating the good behaviour. The leader of the Conservatives. I had a quick chat with him. He he knew it was a nonsense. Um, there was another councillor who basically went and apologised to the guy and said it should never have happened again. Yes, that was Councillor Barber, and I spoke to him, and he was right at the point. He said, if they throw that man out, I'm walking out. And I was like, thank you, that's lovely, but could you wait till I finish my speech? (laughs) Because I thought if one goes, they'll all clear out, and that lot, the only lot that are likely to actually listen or half listen to what we've got to say. One person or something like that, but sorry you went through that experience. So, yeah, I was impressed by them. They were very, but what was interesting is not only were they vexed by the situation, but perplexed. They had no idea or seemingly why the mayor had shut them down. I'm sort of, I could, I knew why she'd shut them down, but it was like, oh, come on, let go of the penny, let it drop, let it drop. But they were like, we've had worse than this said. Like, why on earth are they shutting it down? They couldn't see that there was something in what he'd said which caused that reaction. Yeah, and and you know what? Brilliant. Why? Because it elevates the fact that there's there's something there. There's something there that they really don't like. It's why they would rather be rid of the bloody thing. Uh and and um, what was what was interesting is and what I said, the, the mayor was completely beyond her authority, the ultra virus comment. She she had no authority to do that. There was certainly no justification for wasting police time and thank thankfully you know a couple of the couple of constables who came along were 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 i would say properly trained but at least yes, they, they were, were they yeah. were good compared to some of the cultures to um police officers those yeah. two were excellent yeah um, so a, shout, a, shout, a shout out to the two coppers as well yeah, because they were I'm, very very good I'm, I'm, we learn something new every day in this job Absolutely. you know and, and it's, it's good isn't it you know but at the same time we just want to speak to you very smoothly let me know it's just they have their own you know rules in here you know where's the breach of the plea uh the breach of the peace here nothing's going on uh and so they had no authority to do the wishes of the authorities as it were and so they acted perfectly correctly uh to be fair they should have left but um but i think for the sake of you know just you know calming the uh the deputy mayor in a, from a frightful condition they obviously decided to hang around um interestingly i i turned to the uh councillor um councillor dundas and then called over councillor king and just said to the two of them, look, this is ridiculous. It's now 20 minutes. 
um, of nothing getting that done. Go and see the mayor. There's no breach of the peace here. Just tell her to just come back in and let's get on with this. Nothing, you know, nothing's nothing's happening here. It's nonsense. Fortunately, I think by then the lunacy of uh, the ludicrous behaviour from from the from the from the front had, had kind of probably settled in their minds that they were frankly an embarrassment, but that they were acting out of out of their authority and this assumption that they can just go about doing things that they can't. Um, so can I just say, when um, the policeman came over to have a conversation with Gordon, I um, spoke up to the policeman because my understanding was the breach of the peace that had occurred is when the deputy mayor had shut him down from speaking. Yeah, so he, had, he hadn't breached the peace. No, I know. The point I was making is the breach of the peace happened from the council by shutting him down right. on his freedom of speech. Yeah, you could, you could, you do you know what? The, the the most offensive thing to have happened that night was that it, it there wasn't, there was nothing else. Um, so it was, it was that action by, by the deputy mayor under advisement. I mean, we need, frankly, the question needs to be asked is, you know, to, could they need to confirm what they were doing, what they did, the reasoning behind it? Because we need to understand what's going on in these people's minds. And they need to accept that they were out of order. We need to know who it was that was advising them that they could do this. I mean, who who was it who felt that they could just assume an authority that they simply haven't got? Um, I, I think I, it was the panic over what was being said that it was like whatever he, this has got to, he's got to shut him up. However, we do it. I don't know that they were thinking things through. Um, yeah. And in Please. fairness to her. It's her first time in the big chair. I mean, what an awful evening to have to deal with everything. And also, bear in mind, she's deaf, so it's a much harder position for her to be in because she's having to read the subtitles. She can't lip read. Um, uh, there was a, an episode um, a meeting where she explained the week before just how difficult it is for her to do this. Mm -hmm. So unbelievably stressful for her to have to be playing catch-up, being getting advisement because she's not done that role before you're going to lean on what the officers or whoever around her until you've established yourself in that role you're going to be taking advice and she was clearly given the wrong advice so I did feel for her from that point of view as much as I disliked what she did I could see that she was in an impossibly difficult position in her very first time in the in that role so that was rather unfortunate but that aside I agree 100% it should not have been done yeah well you don't you don't need that do you Oh look, there we are. We're all back. Um, so, I mean, it's uh, it's difficult. I mean, you know, we we, we spoke to Gordon outside. Um, you know, I'm I'm pleased that he's pursuing it because half the problem with things is people just letting things slide. Where, where, and where, who, what, what was the rationale behind what happened that night? That's all we're gonna. We that's what we need to know, and we need to reassert the fact that it's have your say. You know, it doesn't come with any, you know, restriction bar being respectful. Which so I even though at the full council they had this stipulation before about vexatious, et cetera, and that's never happened, we have had occasion where they've shut down speech because they don't like it. The example we had when Rachel ran over for six seconds and was shut down when the guy before was one minute 12. So yes. one has to assume it's the subject matter that they're shutting down. Yeah, always. I, I mean, but equally, that was that councillor's very first time in the chair again. And yeah. I have a sneaking suspicion. I don't know it, can't prove it, but I have a sneaking suspicion. Someone behind the scenes probably told her that's a protester, shut her down. Because ever since then, you you sort of reprimanded her on it, and so did I. She's been brilliant. She's been very good in that role. So, again, I think it's a mixture of wrong advice from whoever is around them and also the stress of the very first time in that role is playing a factor. Yeah, and and um, but let's not let's not draw any distinction. Um, if if somebody's got a, a contrary opinion, then that's as valid as anyone else's. Whether whether they're deemed protester or not is by the by. Yeah, and also in my case, technically speaking, I had gone over time. The fact it was only a few seconds, she yeah. at least she was following a structure that I knew to be what I expected. So 
that's even whole... if it had been inconsistent you yes knew it, that that, that, technically speaking she was correct i had run over time um yeah. it was, was just good was... manners to let someone finish their sentence but that aside the whole thing with the mayor that or deputy mayor that is a whole new level they're taking it to and that yeah. was obviously written in i assumed because they are expecting trouble from the uh, ceasefire protesters uh, and, and not all... from us so yeah. what do you think uh, in Who all do you think that was aimed at no, I think I think to be fair, I mean, I assumed that that was that was something to do with Gaza because they were probably expecting something slightly more emotional and and in fairness. But again, what's the problem with that? Why why can't people protest from their from their hearts in terms of in terms of what they want to say um, about what they perceive to be the truth of what they are seeing? I mean, you know. It's it's very clear if 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 the protesters are going to come in and start you know tearing the place up uh, and, and physical violence abuse etc cetera, etc cetera, that's in their constitution they can they can clearly deal with those people and they have the authority to do that and I don't think any reasonable person would deny that but somebody standing up and just speaking their speaking their piece uh, you know let them have their three minutes let them say what they're going to say and and, and move along yeah um, I mean it's crafty censorship but also. Yeah. If that had been on any other subject, any other person, you know, the most natural reaction would have been to roll your eyes and go, yeah, yeah, whatever, thanks for your contribution, bye, like they normally do. Exactly. That reaction just shows you the level of... <gasps> there's, there's and I wonder lot. how many of those councillors have either just put it off to one side or how many are actually really thinking about it. Like, why did they react like that? Or do you I think mean, most people have thought, I don't know. That was bizarre, and haven't given it a second thought. I well, I, no, I can't speak as to what's in other people's minds. Um, but what was interesting is obviously six weeks ago I was up and 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 I was I was I was standing there with the Bill of Rights. Um, and so yes, it's, it's interesting that six weeks later the subject comes in again uh, obliquely from another you know another guy, and they're immediately you know hackles or whatever. They're they're immediately on a shutdown mode. Right, because there's clearly something there that terrifies them, and and the more that it terrifies them, the more it's going to speak to the braver people that to explore the topic, because the topic needs to be explored and it needs to be explored openly, in a rational way, uh, and in an informed way. Because as you said, you know, uh, being informed by the mainstream media later on is is very different from being informed. Oh. You know, it's you know the chalk and cheese. So if if they've got a problem with it, great. If that problem is with the officers, even better, um, because we are going to go through a process of explanation. You know, you know, this is not stopping. Why? Because things are. We, you know, we're going from the, we're we're way past the sublime and we're past the ridiculous now. We're into the downright dangerous. Um, and I, I I said at the time um, to Councillor Dundas when when uh, during during the uh, uh, unprogrammed interlude, I was you know we were chatting about this that, and the other, and um, I just said to him out of interest, I'd love it if you could ask the question of the chamber: How many actual councillors have actually ever read the Bill of Rights? And um, and he he half laughed, but then he did he did he did offer up that you know those of us who don't know our history are are, are likely to to repeat it, and I you know I saw you know, pretty clearly because we're there we're there in terms of those levels of you know it, just in terms of mistake and error that we've got ourselves into, so you know we are in that repetitive we're in that repetition now we're in that process clearly what we don't want to do. I mean, I don't think we have to reinvent the wheel. Um, and that's the point we're trying to say is, uh, you know, things have just gone off the tracks a bit. So let's get it back on the tracks. Let's let people understand exactly what the nature of the relationship is between us and our councils and us and our parliament and us and our government. Let's reassert that relationship and let's get it working for us because that's their point. They're, you know, they're there to serve. They're there to make the world for us, all of us collectively, better they seem to singularly be failing on that simple requirement they're making our lives worse and without to my mind without any chance of that 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 cycle suddenly turning into a good one if we allow it to continue the way that it's going so uh 
thank you gordon thank you for bringing out the uh the uh the the outrageous um vexatiousness of 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 fact and um and i'm i don't know brian if you've got any other like real that you want to get out or <laughs> um well normally i've got plenty to say um but <laughs> i think you've covered absolutely everything um is it have your say or is it not have your say it, it, it's, it's 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 so simple to look at this in 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 a way that um, they, they clearly don't like certain things. And I think the, the, the monitoring officer has perhaps had some information come through in regards to, uh, let's say, um, the lawfulness of the, the demand for council tax. And that information might be some of the stuff that we've, you know, Mark Mark's put together, um, which clearly mentions the Bill of Rights, and lots of other things and it, it, it's it's as soon as that said and I, i've been i've been talking about this lately um as soon as the bill of rights gets said it's automatically your free man on the land or your your you know you're talking nonsense it's it's ancient stuff uh, and we don't talk about that you know well it's ancient stuff for a reason you know um Oh, but then good. Gordon pulled them back on that and said, look, this has been used recently. It's current legislation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you've read our notice, the caution notice uh, from for the, for, the council, for the council tax challenge. It's all in there. There's so much evidence. There's so much information that they can reference. I'm not, I'm not convinced that they're actually reading the whole 26 pages at the council. I'm just not convinced they're reading it at all. And if they are, I don't think they want to understand it because yeah. that would mean that they would have to come right out of their comfort zone, start questioning the whole system. And, you know, are they going to put their head above the parapet wall? Are they going to lose their nice, comfy little 50, 60, 100 grand job a year, whatever it is? They're not mm. going to do it, are they? We want a full explanation because it just highlights the insanity of what we've allowed to take place you know it's just absolute insanity and and they treat us like children but in fact they're the ones that are acting like the children you know it's it's for me it's well for me it's all good stuff because now we get an opportunity to to go down another avenue of what's this all about you know, you can't, you can't do this. You can't, and you can't, and you're not going to keep getting away with it either. So it's have your say. We will have our say, right? Whether you like it or not. It's that simple for me. So that's it. I just want to, just a quick adjunct to, to what Brian was saying. And we, we chatted about this a few weeks ago. Um, the whole argument that we're being uh, folded into, in other words, the nonsense argument that the, the, the you know, we 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 know that there's a lot of rubbish floating around out there, mm. completely nonsense ideas. We aren't those nonsense ideas, and that's something that we're keen to iterate. We agree uh, with, you know, we we agree that the whole Freeman um, argument is is th there's some truth to it, but it's so badly put together. What we're saying is is look, we agree with you that that's basically not really workable what we're saying is something completely different and we're not being treated yet as as something you know it's easier to roll what is the correct argument that has been pulled together and wrap it into a nonsense argument and then just discard it so you know we're quite content to sit down with with people with open minds and explain it to them and we will spend you know however long it takes trying to make them understand that which they do not want to understand. Why? Because to some extent, as Brian alluded, their salary depends upon it. Yeah. So, I mean, we've uh, we've opened the out-of-office hours on the PAT website. Um, so, you know, um, I've got to get a plug in for that. Um, yeah, do you want to tell people about PAT pretty quickly? Brian, that's... Pat, Pat's um, pretty much designed... Uh, off the back of the peacekeepers information okay uh, but we're trying to use it in a much more simplistic manner and pat stands for public accountability team so we want to use 
the tools that we've put together in a particular format, I suppose pretty much like we've been doing so far with, with Colchester uh, and how we've uh, fortunately got um, a, a potential, this potential public discovery meeting with um, with David uh so uh the leader of the council and, and various others so so pat is a way of um learning how to communicate with the public office holders trying to gain some sort of create some sort of rapport with them because we don't want to go in there angry uh at the end of the day so it, there's loads of elements to it um I, I won't bore you with it all now but a lot of thought's gone into it i i would i would suggest people go and visit it and and uh, yeah i'll put a link in under in the description under this video uh, and explore that because we're trying to advance you know because we you know we've got a problem you know a more broad problem in terms of how we go about advancing uh just talking to one another and understanding how it is that we've got here and understanding how it should work now pat is a way of structuring that in such a in such a way that we can help you know help uh help both the people trying to correct things and the people on the other side because it, this is not an us and them world we live in i know people like to represent it as an us and them world it's simply the world and we all live in it and it isn't functioning very well for anyone you know so uh so pat's an attempt um to draw people together in an adult way i suppose that's probably the fairest way to put yeah. it because <laughs> because we we want to get rid of the nonsense you know we want to get rid of the nonsense ideas and and we want to get rid of the nonsense people you know and there's lots of them and everyone can evolve uh, you know so pat's an evolutionary tool in fact that's it is part of the evolution so uh, uh you know and we, you know we want to do it the right way and we want to we want to do it in such a way that we can start restoring things so this is um it's very much with the idea of a renaissance behind it that everything's there it's correct it just needs a bit of a dusting down and people need to just apply their minds to it because it is right and it is correct it just needs to be put back in motion because uh, we've allowed a load of rubbish to, to to kind of creep up on us. Yeah, uh, restore to factory settings. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Um, what is it? The yeah. Your um, your operating soft system. reboot. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Right. Lovely. Well, thank you so much for your time this evening and expertise. We very much appreciate that. So, and that was good to get your take on the rundown of what Gordon said. So yeah, we'll get this up and see what people say. Anything else before we finish? No, I think that just about covers it. Apologies for the toothache, but it's well, weird. seriously, try the sit the the saltiest salt water you can cope with. Swill it around, really suck it through the teeth. Do that every ten minutes, and it will. It, it's incredible how much it will numb the pain. That and clove oil. And you, we can see on your face, Brian, how much pain you're in. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you're doing well. But you can see. So get Thanks better. I, I, I can offer string and a door. <laughs> oh. oh high level <laughs> right i think we'll go now then <laughs> okay.